Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it we are looking at the four online quizzes for Chapter 12 on chi-squared tests. This is the first quiz. The first question is, a chi-squared test is conducted a. when three or more samples are being compared, b. when both of the variables are nominal or ordinal data, c. when the population mean and sample mean are known, or d. when two sample means are being compared. The answer to this one is B. Um, I'll show you in a second, but A, when three or more samples are being compared, you'd want to use an analysis of variance for that as long as it's a uh, quantitative uh, outcome variable, so uh, interval or ratio level. C, when the population mean and sample mean are known, that sounds like a situation. Actually, you could do a t-test or analysis of variance in that situation. And D, when two sample means are being compared, that's usually a two-sample t-test. But let's take a look at B just for a moment. When you have two categorical variables, and that can be nominal or ordinal, um, that is one of the situations where you would want to use a, a chi-square test. It's actually the chi-square test for independence. There's also the chi-square test for uh, goodness of fit, which is when you have a single categorical variable. And I'm showing you uh, just an example here where we have the uh, number of men and women enrolled in various colleges at Utah Valley University. And this is an example where you would use a chi-square test to get an inferential value. Okay, question number two. Which version of the chi-squared test is good for examining the relationship between two variables? The choices are the chi-squared test for independence, the chi-squared goodness of fit test, the chi-squared correlational test, or no version of chi-squared works for relationships. The answer is A, the chi-squared test for independence. Um, goodness of fit is for a single categorical variable. Chi-squared correlational test I made up doesn't mean anything, and D just isn't correct because you can do it. Um, here are the sample, the example data that I used um, in the presentation and the text on it, where I have uh, men and women enrolled in. Uh, this is this is hypothetical data about men and women getting awarded athletic scholarships in different sports. So we have two categorical variables. One is the sex of the uh, uh, the respondent, and that's men or women, male or female. And the second also a categorical variable is the sport that they uh, receive their scholarship in. So yeah, you can do this with a chi-square test for independence. That's what this call is called. Uh, the third one, the probability distribution that is used in the chi-square test is the A, F distribution, the T distribution, the chi-square distribution, or the Z distribution. The answer is the chi-square distribution. Uh, the F distribution is used for the analysis of variance. The T distribution is used for the T test. The Z distribution tends to be used for it's for the Z test. Anyhow, um, the chi-square distribution is an asymmetrical distribution. It starts at zero and it goes up. Uh, there's, it's a whole family distributions depending on the number of degrees of freedom you have. And here we have five different variations with different degrees of freedom. And these all have to do with how many categories you have. Not the number of people, but the, the not the number of observations, but the number of categories that they fall into. So uh, k equals 1 means you have uh, one category. Uh, k equals 2 means you have two categories, and so on. All right, number four. The chi-squared tests are... A, inferential statistics and procedures, or B, descriptive statistics and procedures, or C, methods of data transformation, or D, used to impute or replace missing data. Um, A, there are inferential statistics or procedures, the same way that the t-test and the analysis of variance uh, were inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics and procedures, um, no, you would use percentages, uh, or there's also something called the odds ratio that you would use. The, the chi-square value in and of itself is not helpful. Um, on the other hand, you can convert it into a version of the uh, correlation coefficient that's called the phi coefficient, uh, and that is a descriptive statistic. Uh, data transformation, no, that, that would be things like logarithmic and exponential uh, or inverse uh, transformations. And in terms of imputing data, imputing data means replacing missing data, and uh, chi-square has nothing to do with that. It's an important topic, but this test has nothing to do with it. Anyhow, this is a chi-square distribution, and you can see right here, this is exactly what it looks like when we set up an inferential test. We get a test value. Here is 2.398. We have a critical value, 6.251, and we're trying to see whether our sample value exceeds the critical value, and then in which case we would reject the null hypothesis. That's, that's the inferential statistic procedure. All right. 
Number five, last question in quiz one. If a researcher conducts a chi-squared test for independence using an alpha of 01 and gets an observed p-value of 04, then he, A, should reject the null hypothesis, B, has proven that the null hypothesis is true, C, should retain or fail to reject the null hypothesis, or D, needs to gather new data. Well, the alpha was 01, the p-value was 04, so our p-value is bigger than our alpha we should retain or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, and again, it's, it's the same chart I showed you just a moment ago. Here we have an, uh, an observed value, uh, 2.398, and I don't have the, um, the, the p-value for that one, but let's imagine it's 0.4, and that green shaded area represents the alpha, uh, and let's pretend it's 01. Just the point is, we're not in it. Um, our, we set, it said it had to have a below a certain probability, below 1% chance of something like that arising in the null uh, distribution, and we got a 4%, so it's too big compared to what we want. If, on the other hand, we done it with a 5%, we would have rejected the null hypothesis. Um, so it all depends about what your criteria are. Anyhow, that's the end of the first uh, quiz, and I'll see you in a moment for the second one.